Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? We are going to start talking about uh, enforceable supply chain policies and attestations using Intoto. I'm really excited to be uh, all the way across the pond to talk about a project that's been uh, dear to my heart for, I think it's turning 10 years uh, this year, which is uh, very exciting. I'm Santiago, I work at Purdue, and this is Alan. Hi, everyone. So, in order to understand what Intoto is for and what it is about, we want to we first need to understand what a software supply chain attack is. And uh, actually, does everybody know what a software supply chain is, first of all? I assume that if you're in this room, you have some passing knowledge and you're interested in securing the supply chain rather than understanding what it is. But a supply chain is essentially a collection of steps that are carried out in order to produce a software product. The, uh, the common understanding uh, nowadays is that in order to make a serious piece of software, really any software, you're going to rely on a bunch of different things to make that software. This includes devices, servers, organizations, and people that uh, will help you produce the software that you want to produce. A software supply chain attack is when somebody tries to attack that particular uh, aspect of software development in order to carry out something malicious. This is stealing your uh, private property or intellectual property or introducing a Trojan in your software or even denying uh, your ability to deliver the software to, uh, to our users. The software supply chain security ecosystem nowadays is pretty uh, premature. There's a lot of things out there. Sometimes it's a little bit daunting when you look at all of the solutions that exist. Something that I want to uh, to help you uh, contextualize is this uh, model where you uh, have three major things that you want to do in order to protect the software supply chain. At the left, you have evidence gathering, uh, things like Salsa, Tekton Chains, Witness, Cyclone DX, and SPDX are ways for you to say, hey, this is what I know about this particular step or element on my software supply chain. Once you know everything about the software supply chain, you need to communicate it to your users. So you may want to use a system that allows you to verifiably transmit this information to your clients. You have things like WAC or Git, Gitbomb or Omnibore. You have Archivista, you have Graphius, Skit, Sixtor. All of these systems provide transparency to the evidence that has been gathered throughout the supply chain. Uh, now, giving this information to the user is not enough. They want to know whether they can trust your piece of software based on the evidence that they, you collected. So things like Q, an open policy agent, or Kyverno, there's really so many things out there that can help you verify this information, but they will contact and talk to these transparency services in order to verify the state of the supply chain. Now, you may be asking yourself, does this have to do with Intoto? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Intoto is part of all of this solutions in some way or another, or it really is meant to allow you to carry out this flow of gathering, delivery, and verification in a unified framework. You may notice uh, Intoto is involved in other things that you all are very familiar with. For example, Salsa. Salsa and Intoto play very well together. If you have seen Docker image at the stations, they're uh, piggybacking on top of Intoto to also communicate the information about the images. NPM and GitHub at the stations, uh, which is a very exciting uh, public beta that allows you to verify that a build on GitHub Actions is actually providing a provenance for the package that you're about to install in a different platform, which is NPM. I'll talk a little bit more about those in detail in a minute. Now, more explicitly, Intoto is a way to manage all of the supply chain metadata and deliver it verifiably to your consumers. So for example, you collect information about your software supply chain as you are carrying out source, uh, source code development, or you're building a CI CD system like Travis, or you are uh, using uh, uh, an independent build farm using Meson or something like that, or you're packaging on a on a Linux distro, you want to communicate information about each individual step. Now, each individual step in this case is an attestation, and it's a literally a small receipt, a signed receipt that says, I did the source code development, I did the building, I did the testing, I did the packaging. In total, it's comprised of two uh, fundamental things. Then we have attestations, as I just pointed out, and you also have uh, layouts and policies that tell you what are those attestations supposed to look like? This looks a little bit like this. 
you have an attestation that comprises of an envelope, a predicate, and a subject. Uh, at a very high level, the envelope combines the uh, predicate and the subject. It says, this particular piece of uh, software, say a package or a piece of source code, has this information attached to it. That is the predicate. So for example, to put it on more concrete uh, terms, you may have something like, this particular build has a salsa provenance attached to it. Now you know that this uh, salsa provenance is applicable to this particular uh, artifact that was built. If you wanted to seek uh, congruence or check that there's also a vulnerability scan, then you can find an attestation that talks about the exact same piece of software, but with a different predicate. That would be the result of something like trivia. When you, have, when you combine enough attestations, you're able to essentially visualize the software supply chain and the different steps as they connect to each other. In this case, uh, the attestations that I showed you uh, were uh, displaying something like you take the version control system code, you put it on Travis EI to, to check that everything is correct, but you also want to build it on a separate build farm and create this also provenance attestation for it. And then you eventually want to package it and produce a nest bomb for it. And you want all of these things to be in agreement so that you know that all of these are part of the same supply chain. It's verifiable, it's uh, trustworthy. In total then lets you answer a bunch of different questions, not only at the, at, at the individual predicate level, but actually at the whole end-to-end -end software supply chain level. So in this case, we know who did what. That is, who is the person who tagged the release? Which server was used to build the source code? Which, um, which packager or which build farm is the one where this was built? What server was this run? Are they allowed to do this, uh, this release? Uh, is this SBOM the one that applies to this uh, particular artifact that also has uh, a salsa provenance attached to it? And so on and so forth. Really, the fundamental question that we want to answer when we're using Intoto is, should I be using this piece of software? So, to bring it a little bit more to the concrete, you can use a tool like Trivi today. You can scan your software and you can spit out information about the, about the scan in an internal attestation. And then, well, you can create a policy that says, I want every single artifact that I'm delivering to my users to have a vulnerability scan. And that vulnerability scan needs to be trustworthy. So I want somebody in my company to be the one that's running this vulnerability scan. You can do things like salsa provenance attestations, which you're probably very familiar with by now, which are, I want this to be built on GitHub Actions, or I want this to be uh, built on my Jenkins runner, and I only want it to be built on that Jenkins runner with a proper compiler and the proper tools and dependencies and the latest kernel with the best patches available and so on and so forth. We'll talk a little bit more about this on the demo. You can also answer other more like, open-ended questions. That's why the, there's uh, open-ended attestation types that can uh, fill in the blanks of, well, when I run the tests, did they pass? Was there an OK at the end? Or was there a build, like a runtime trace that collected information of the, of the build as it was being built? So I can, I can do a little bit more granular analysis of the artifact as it was being built. The idea is that you can use Intoto as a common method to manage and to analyze the software supply chain attestation and apply it to a policy that applies not only to a particular part of the supply chain, but rather encompasses an end-to-end -end flow of the software supply chain. Now, you can do this with uh, Intoto tooling. There is a lot, so don't get overwhelmed. Something that I wanted to do this time around uh, is to give you a little bit of an overview of all of the tools that are out there and give you a little bit of guidance on how to get started. There's a lot of uh, Intoto reference implementations in different languages. Uh, there's Java, Rust, Python, Go. I think there's a couple of others, but I really focus on those ones. I think that's enough to play with. But uh, if you wanted to just go ahead and use Intoto directly on your system, you probably want to use something like Witness. Witness is a production-ready CLI that allows you to collect different types of attestations of different steps of the software supply chain, sign them, deliver to a right to a discovery platform, and so on and so forth. You can use, uh, you can use Archivista as your discovery platform as well, so that as you generate attestations on Witness, you can deliver them to Archivista for discovery later. 
yeah. Uh, and we also have, there's also judge, <laughs> which can let you verify as well. Really, you can uh, apply uh, in total policies with layouts using total tooling as well. In total uh, at station verifier, which I think we'll uh, showcase today, covers this really well. Now, if you think about it, this means that there's a lot of different things that you can say about software, and it's a little bit of a, it's almost like a programming language or a natural language. We have a collection of different predicates that you can use that uh, help you answer and collect the uh, information about most common questions on the software supply chain. If you're familiar with Salsa, well, Salsa is one of the predicates, probably the most popular one, and it's answering a very specific question, which is, how did I build this? But there may be other things that you may want to answer, again, like, what was the version of the compiler that, or the shell of the compiler that built this binary, or what was the result or output of a vulnerability scan on my particular artifact as it, as it was being built. So I encourage you to take a look at the attestation repo and just almost look at it as a menu of, well, what would I want to do in order to protect my supply chain? To summarize all of the, all of the information about the tooling, uh, this table, I think it encapsulates it very well. If you are somebody who wants to use Intoto and you want to use a very complex workflow, that's in very elaborate, you may want to use Witness and Archivista together to collect and discover the information and apply policy. An example of this could be something like automated uh, NIST SP 800-204-D. There's European Union and French and British and German uh, standards that are very similar to this. Uh, they're trying to, to guide you in ways that you can collect different information, not only provenance, but also uh, S-bombs or vulnerability scans or, yeah, or information about the stack that was used to build something. If you want to automate compliance, which is a very elaborate uh, uh, endeavor, you may want to use something like uh, Witness or Archivista. If you're a developer that wants to uh, extend or integrate and, or add support to your project, you may want to use internal libraries. If you're, for example, adding to the verification to a package manager, uh, like NPM did, you may want to use in total uh, reference libraries. If you're a user and you just want to get started and adding some degree of uh, in total verification to your pipeline, you may want to start with a CI uh, platform. They are the ones that are the most ahead in integrating. So you may just want to enable it in your in your platform. GitHub Actions already has uh, ways to enable a provenance on your uh, on your project. GitLab Runners also have support for Intoto. Technic Chains, there's a Jenkins plugin that you can use. All of these tools are almost just flick a switch and start producing attestations that you can verify later down the line. Now I'm going to hand it to Alan so he can walk me through uh, or walk us through the demo. Um, I think this will help crystallize uh, the concept a little bit better. Yeah, thank you, Santiago. So uh, for today's demo, um, I'm doing something very bare bones, just a simple um, C application, just to demonstrate the uh, the power of like using like attesting to certain steps and then using um, layouts to verify your policy and making sure that the, uh, the integrity of your supply chain is intact, right? So this is a high level high level overview. So you take in a tarball, you untar it. Um, and you generate like all the files and then you compile each file to an object file and then compile it all to the binary. Um, so let's see. So if you look at this, the, uh, the demo will basically take all of this and then um, switch out the external object file um, just to basically simul simulate uh, what an example uh, supply chain attack would be, right? So for example, if this were running on a specific um, environment where, um, for some reason, every time you try to build the executable, it switches out the uh, object file. Um, you will not be able to detect it even if you know that the external C file is um, the original, right? Um, so the way I will demonstrate how Intoto works is basically use Intoto to basically secure each of these steps. Uh, these steps are um, encircled in the dotted lines, as you can see, and um, basically. Uh, in between each step, we have, think of it as like a chain. And in that case, if the external object file is compromised, the chain will break. Um, so hopefully, uh, the demo will demonstrate it. Um, so let's give it a go. 
let's see. Uh, yep, so first of all, in terms of project, so first of all, I'm gonna do a dry run without in total just so you guys can see what's expected. So I enter the project, you can see the project directory, um, and then you start building the object files and run the command um, without any errors. So as you can see, um, just print save hello world. Now I will inject the malicious object file um, and build it again. Um, and obviously, if you capture hashes, they will be different, but if you run the execute role again, it's on safe unknown code. Um, who knows what's in there? Um, and now, right now, I'm gonna demonstrate the, how it will happen with using um, in total, right? So I have a new, um, I wrote a small program that basically just generates a new uh, link attestation at each step. So link attestation, uh, high level, basically takes, you have the, you take in the input files and you uh, capture the output files. Um, it's pretty simple, gives you a lot of power to basically connect a lot of the steps together uh, just using files and other artifacts. So as you can see, um, you, you basically pass it the key to sign the Intoto um, artifact and then you also give it a name. Um, and, it, and if we run through most of the uh, steps again, um, you get the same executable and now we're running the in total verify um, command, which basically passes in a layout. I'll show the layout later. Um, but um, basically what happens is that it takes in all of the uh, attestations generated and, and basically verifies each step. Um, and then if we were to inject a malicious file, it dish and build a project again, this should, and as you can see, it's the unsafe code. If you run the verify again, it fails. So it doesn't print it in red, but verification failed. So I'll show the layout right now. And as you can see, um, we basically de declare something called a functionary. So people who are allowed to carry out certain steps. And then we also have, and then in each step, you can see uh, how I define um, what's created, what's produced, and what a command I expected to use. So the Antar creates all these files. Uh, build external gen uses the uh, source files as I showed earlier um, and generates the object file. Same goes with main. And then as you can see in the final, uh, one of the nice things you could do is basically match. So whatever is, so you can have one future step rely on the product of past steps. Um, yeah. Live. That's it for the demo. And if you like to look at it, uh, still a work in production. But um, but yeah, here's the link to the demo if you like to look at it in the later time. But yeah, uh, I'll pass it off to Santiago to talk about Thank you. real world use cases. <laughs> so uh, something that I, I don't know if you noticed here is that Intoto works a little bit like a firewall, and it was able to filter any artifact that was not authenticated from uh, an actor in the supply chain. Uh, this all also connects to the use cases uh, because this is a simulation of uh, probably the most uh, infamous software supply chain attack in history that was SolarWinds, in which uh, a process was changing an object file as it was being linked. Uh, within Toto, you can essentially filter out the object file as it was as it's being linked, but you can also uh, ensure that, say, different builders agree or that different uh, different aspects of the, of the stack are actually authenticated, like the compiler, the linker, other processes that are touching the files, and so on and so forth. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, GitHub and NPM. Uh, I think it's one of the coolest uh, total integrations out there. To explain how uh, GitHub and NPM are using Intoto and Sixtor and other uh, related technologies, uh, this is a diagram directly from the blog. Essentially what they're doing is every time you do publish, NPM publish with provenance, it will authenticate you using Sixtor or Fullcio, and it will give you a signing key. So you do, thanks to Sixtor, you don't even need to reason about how do I manage my keys, but rather who is the uh, email or the identity that's allowed to publish this artifact. Once you get the key or, the, or use the keyless flow from Sixtor, you generate a provenance attestation. What does that mean? It will connect the GitHub repo where the source code is located 
to the NPM uh, package as it's being published. When, oh, yeah. Once, uh, once it's uh, signed and generated, it is put together into, oh, I think, uh, I think I'm missing a slide. It is put together. The package and the provenance are put together into, into the NPM repo. What does that mean? That if somebody were to break into the NPM repo and change the packages, they wouldn't be able to, uh, to also tamper with the original commit that was in, the, in GitHub, because these two things are linked together now. Does this make sense? I see a couple of people nodding. That's great. <laughs> the other uh, example that I wanted to highlight is the post sunburst uh, solar winds deployment. Again, the inspiration for the demo was borrow borrowing a little bit of how uh, solar burst happened. The, they did it a little bit differently on solar winds, though. They have a white paper called Trebuchet, if you want to read on it. Uh, there's a lot of more details. Here's a screenshot of their uh, diagram. And what they what they do is they do a very similar thing as uh, GitHub and NPM, the, but instead they're leveraging reproducible builds, and they're leveraging in total to verify reproducible builds. What does that mean? They separate two different uh, build pipelines, completely disconnected from each other, different stacks, different network configurations, so that if somebody were to hack into the system, they would have to hack into both systems at the same time and hack it in the very same way to produce the same malicious binary. What this really means is that in order to introduce a backdoor through the compiler, you not only need to compromise both servers, but you also need to, to make your compromise reproducible in a way. Now, once each individual pipeline builds, uh, their, uh, their binary, they produce an, uh, an Intoto plus salsa provenance at the station and they store it on the metadata store. That's, that's the store that's in the, uh, sorry, the box that's in the middle. When it is, when a deployment, this takes more information, for example, a vulnerability scan, this also makes it to the metadata store. And eventually, they receive a signal to validate the result of the two. What does this mean? It goes and queries both salsa provenance at the stations. It queries any other associated metadata, like a vulnerability scan, and it asks itself, are these two the same binary? Even though they were built by different people, are they the same exact binary? If that passes, then the binary is released. It is put to, uh, to the build binary artifacts and the container images so that uh, users can download the resulting build. To close out, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can get involved into the project and then uh, jump into the jump into the questions. In total, it's a mature project. It's actually waiting for uh, graduation. Uh, this, whole, this means that even though there's a, a lot of mature pieces of software out there, there's also a lot of things that you can do to get involved in the project. Perhaps the most obvious one is contributing to tooling. I think a very exciting place to be working at right now is uh, the Witness and Archivist implementations. These are two uh, recently donated pieces of software. They are meant to work with most of the new uh, attestation types. They're meant to allow you to create new attestation types if you think that there's no predicates that match your use case. They uh, allow you to integrate with other projects a little bit better. For example, if you're using Sixdoor to sign, they allow you to use Sixdoor to sign. And they also uh, come with a lot of little knobs that you can really use to forget about implementing in total and just using in total. Contributing to uh, Witness and Archivista is, is something that I really suggest because it, I believe that that's the way that in total should be used in the future. If you are trying to use in total in a particular project uh, and you feel that there's a feature missing, integrating with uh, that particular project is also a good way to help us out. What, what this is really saying is not contribute to in total, the in total project proper, but maybe working your project and adding total support for it. Making your tool, especially if it's supply chain related, spit out at the stations or, or generate at the stations is relatively simple. I've done it for a couple of projects myself. A lot of the times it's 15 lines of code. You use the runtime libraries, you import the right modules, you fill in a data structure, you call sign, and then you print it out on the appropriate channel. 
Uh, I, I think CubeSec is a good example. If you want to take a look at how easy it would be to do it, you just add that particular line of code on an API response, and then you can start authenticating within Toto provenance of uh, API um, questions and answers, for example, for codecs or new like emerging technologies. The last thing, and I don't want to minimize this, I think this is actually the most useful, is uh, help us integrate with your environment. That is, if you uh, have a project in the CNCF or the OpenSSF or really anything out there, and you don't know how Intoto could fit, we learn a lot from that perspective. A lot of the times, this is what drives new predicate, new predicate types or new projects altogether that help us work with uh, in integrating things. If you don't know how to verify a particular thing of the software supply chain, like how do I know if this is running on an on a Intel SGX enclave, this allows us to drive better tooling and future innovation in the project. So don't discard that. I think that's a, that's a very good way to engage with us. And well, we have a, we have a more open-ended way to, to interact, which is just join our communication challenge, uh, channels. Sorry. Uh, the Intoto community meeting is on for the first Friday of every month. Right now, it's at 11 uh, a.m. Eastern, which is a little bit late for the EU time zone folks. We may be uh, adding another time zone to accommodate EU and uh, Asia time zones. You can drop by the CNCF Slack uh, and the Toto channel. That's the main hub. We have other channels, but that, that's the first place to interact and get involved. If you are old school like myself, there is a IRC channel on uh, Libera. I am there. It's not very it's, it's not very chatty right now, but it's supposed to be bridge. So a lot of the times, the messages bounce between Slack and, uh, and Libera, and we'll find a way to answer there. We also have the public mailing list. If you're even more old school than IRC and you want to say, uh, send emails exclusively to a mailing list, this is also what we use for announcements of like big releases or project donations and things like that. And well, you can also take a look at the organization and just browse the projects, leave, leave us feedback, open an issue, and so on and so forth. I think with this, we can open the floor for questions. We have plenty of time for questions. Oh, I think I, I think I have this. Uh, you said runtime or at link time? Oh, okay. So, like, a, you mean monitoring once it is deployed? Yeah. So. We have runtime trace at the stations that you can use to essentially check for the for the state of a of a process. They're a little bit open ended, and the use case is not entirely mature. Uh, I would say that there's a distinction between like runtime and how to call it. So, runtime and continuous monitoring. I want to separate those two things. So, for example, you may be continuously creating attestations of vulnerability scans and replacing all vulnerability scan attestations so that if the policy stops verifying at any point, you deprovision the container. Yeah, okay, makes sense. We've um, acquired a new regulation in the UK for telco stuff that says, you know, thou must only run signed containers. And we're trying to work out how. <laughs> yeah, well, we should also uh, add that to a demo. Um, there are a couple of admission controllers that can verify signatures of our containers as they are getting in. Uh, and you can verify a policy uh, on at admission time. I think uh, Kyverno is one that does that. It, it also adds support for six door and uh, for internal attestations as they are coming in. Uh, I think there's the six door policy controller that allows you to do the same more on the like six or native land. And uh, yeah, you can also do the like the continuous monitoring, but for that, I think better support in something like a service mesh would be ideal. Uh, essentially, can you deprovision something that somebody 
marked as malicious or like untrusted. I think uh, integrating uh, WAC with a service mesh may be an interesting killer combo in that regard, but I think that use case is not fully developed yet. Interesting. Sounds unsolved to me. <laughs> well, uh, it depends on uh, whether it's solved at the theoretical level, it, which I'm comfortable with as an academic, <laughs> or, uh, or is it productionized yet? Hi, everyone, and Nicolas uh, from Thales. Uh, thank you, merci, for your presentation. I have a question about uh, environment where you are uh, not necessarily uh, connected to uh, the network uh, in, or you have intermittent network, like uh, I think uh, yesterday it was the edge day, uh, there are a lot of people talking about intermittent connections. So what happens to the attestation uh, when you don't have uh, access to like uh, a remote uh, registry with everything going on there? That is a good, very good question. Uh, discovery is agnostic to a lot of Intoda tooling. Uh, for example, in the case that you saw here, it was copying uh, attestations like through the directory, almost like sneaker net. You could put it on a USB stick and carry it over. Uh, there is a, a somewhat established solution for communicating this trust information as part of a six-store bundle. That is, you get the regular six-store trust information plus associated attestations on a single sort of blob that then you go deliver somewhere and it's meant to work fully offline. Um, for the more intermittent case, uh, I, I would assume that a lot of these discovery platforms allow you to pull or batch. Uh, I, I know that WAC, for example, allows you to do a batch push, like you detect a co uh, connection, you send as many stations as you can, and then you and then you stop transmitting. But really, you wouldn't trust the artifact until all of the stations are there. Or maybe you could trigger the deployment uh, once you have the connection. For example, uh, with uh, Kaiverno, uh, which is uh, looking after it, and then when you are not connected anymore, maybe the cache would be enough to... Yes, so uh, the verification usually pulls in the attestations and then you have those for essentially reference on your side, uh, which should be enough for you to, to say, reprovision a container or, or re-verify them. Okay, so I should have a look to six store uh, bundles? I, I like them, I think they're a good solution. I, I recommend taking a look at them. Thank you very much. Hi, I had a question. So if you are a consumer of a pipeline that was digitally signed and attested to, and let's say it's a Docker, a base Docker image, and I validated that signature, validated those attestations, is there a standardized way for me then in my own pipeline to, for the consumers of my artifacts, say that I've verified this, whether it's inheriting those attestations or some level of verification of the entire supply chain? Yes, uh, I love that question. Uh, almost feels like I was wishing for it. <laughs> so there's a couple of things there. Uh, there's a type of predicate. You can generate an attestation that says, I verified this, this collection of attestations. That's called a VSA. Uh, running in total verify on a pipeline produces that attestation, only if you successfully do it. Uh, if you want to be like very transparent about it, in total layouts are also uh, composable. So you can say my step of getting dependencies, for example, needed to run this uh, verification. So I'll give you all of the attestations and you can verify them yourself if you so want to. Now, the VSA, the verification summary attestations, are useful a lot of the times because you don't want to A, transmit like petabytes of attestations, and B, you may not want to be fully disclosing of every single detail, right? If it's a third party sort of like private dependency that doesn't want to tell how exactly is this built, but there's a good compromise of, well, trust me, I verified it uh, under a particular policy. That is, uh, that is a good sort of like approach, I feel. Thank you. I think we have time for a last one. 
or maybe not. Well, I'm actually out of time. It was a pleasure, and uh, I'll be around if you have any questions for offline.